What's up, wizards? Welcome to the Great Dick Debate. This is episode one, a new series that we're trying out. This should be fun. Um, instead of I just give you a deck tech or Tony just gives you a deck tech, we're going to both give you our ideas for Grix's control. These are fairly similar and yet very different Grixis control decks. So, yeah, I'd say, want to get to it? You ready? Yeah. Uh, do it! They're both, uh, like Devin said, very different, and they're tailored to meet your metagame requirements. Exactly. You want to start with the creatures first and kind of go from there? Yeah, I think that'll work for us. All right, I'll give you, let's go. I'm going to give it to Tony. <laughs> Pass it so, off. starting off for uh, my Grixis Dragons Control deck list here, Woo. we run six creatures, and surprise, they're all dragons. We've got two Dragon Lord Silumgar and one Silumgar Drif Drifting Death. Uh, which is a standard control finisher at uh, 3 7 flying hexproof. Boom! Yeah. Hexproof! Moving on, we got two Icefall Regents. Uh, if you guys have seen my Mono Blue Devotion deck tech, I love this guy. <laughs> you know you know Tony's affinity for Icefall Regent. If, if you know Tony at all, uh, <laughs> can't really blame the guy though. It's a good card. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, one of the most powerful dragons, Stormbreath Dragon. <laughs> Uh, Pearl White is really going to help us out in that Ojutai and Esper control matchup. Yeah, I love how he blocks Ojutai. I, I really do. <laughs> he blocks Ojutai. You do not care at all. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people are playing, like, Valorous Stance and stuff. I mean, it, you know, Pearl White does come into... A oh, yeah, that Pearl White... see a lot of, like, Devouring sense. Light and Banishing Light nowadays, too. And, I mean, this guy really doesn't care about any of that, so that's yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, my creatures... I'm running five, so I'm running one less creature than Tony here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm doing two um, Dragonlord Silumgars. I'm doing two Silumgar Drifting Death. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm doing one Storm Breath. Um, so the, what's the big difference there? Uh, <laughs> so why didn't Icefall Regents make the cut? Yeah, you know, Icefall... I, I, I will go ahead and concede a point to Tony on this. I think that if I had to add any single one card to the entire deck here, it would be Icefall Regent. I don't know why more people aren't playing the card. Honestly, uh, it's fan freaking fantastic. I mean, it's. <laughs> I think that Icefall Region has proven how good it is. Um, I just wanted more space for spells, and I didn't want so many sort of, you know, main phase um, things. Actually, you know yeah. what I mean? And aside from that, I, I will say I'm playing two Silumgar the Drifting Death. I feel like um, I love Hexproof. Yeah. I just love Hexproof too much to not play two copies of the guy. <laughs> I just, honestly, I really have no other excuse other than Hexproof is, is Hexproof. Mm -hmm. Most relevant ability, keyword ability in Magic, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, Control love Hexproof. <laughs> control love Hexproof. I only went with one because, you, from what I can tell, you really only need one. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple edict effects going around, most yeah. commonly Foul Tongue Invocation. We love Invocation. Yeah. I feel like as long as we get one to stick, that's all we're going to need. Um, I could agree with that, yeah. Yeah, so that's I, why I didn't run two. But uh, Devin's actually very valid in running two, because that way you have a backup. Yeah, I mean, there's there's an argument to be made, I understand, that you're like, well, if you're running two, there's always a chance one to be dead in your hand. But I just, I really want to see this card yeah. a lot. Not only that, it blocks all the other Dragon Lords, like, super favorably, you know what I mean? Yeah. I want to see him more than I want to see the Dragon Lord. Mm. Um, but the Dragon Lord, uh, obviously, I think he's gaining prominence, too, in this format. People are coming around to him. Uh, but the point we want to make before we move on to the spells is that Silumgar, Dragon Lord Silumgar, does not cost six mana. <laughs> no. He costs no. eight or nine. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you always want to protect him. Worst feeling in the world is Dragon Lord Silumgar, let me get your Siege Rhino, and the next turn they heroes down fall you. Yeah. Silumgar. <laughs> or Murder's Cut. Yes, or something, you know, Abzan Charm. Just worst feeling in the world, you know. Uh, so you want to, when you play your Silumgar, I think a lot of people know this, but I want to reiterate, and so does Tony. Mm -hmm. Protect your Dragon Lord Silumgar. So make sure you've got two to three mana up for a counter spell. Yeah. I, we're also playing. We'll go ahead and touch on this. We're both playing one Ugin the Spirit Dragon mm. for very obvious reasons. I don't think we have to explain ourselves we're, why we're playing much. Ugin because it's it's good. Yeah. Um, with that, I think we can probably move on to the spells. Oh yeah, we can do that now. Trust me. Our spell list looks very different. <laughs> so, And we're playing the same cards uh, in most cases, but we're playing different numbers of them and all that. Yeah. We're going to post them right here. So we're, we're both running four digs. We're both mm -hmm. running two Crux of Fate. Um, 
that's where the similarities kind of end, though. Yeah. Honestly, you know, you're playing... Oh, well, we're running four score and a piece. Four score and a piece. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, that's sort of the... When I first started making this deck, I had three score and then quickly realized, mm -hmm. you know, this, this needs to be four. But aside from that, he's playing two ultimate price and two roast. I'm playing one of each of those. Um, and then just a bunch. He's not playing Thoughtseize. He's not playing Anticipate. He's playing Anger. I'm not. So you can see where this, there's a huge difference. I think yeah. that probably the most concise way to put it is that your deck is tuned main deck more towards aggro. Yeah. My, um, uh, my main deck deals with a lot of your aggro deck problems. A darker red, green red dragons, Ban heroic, uh... What's the other one I'm thinking of? Just Guy Tokens. Yeah, yeah, any, yeah, red, white, or Just Guy Tokens. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, the anger of the gods, the presence of anger in the of the gods is pretty big, I think, in your um, main deck. Which, I will say this, in testing, it started off as Drown and Sorrows, with angers being in the sideboard. However, there have been too many times where I wished that the creatures got exiled, and for that example, it's uh, Ash Cloud Phoenix against Green yeah. Dragons. It only has one toughness, so either card's gonna either spell would kill it, but having it exile from Anger of the Gods just it's crazy. infinitely yeah. defines Much the match. And people are playing Ash Cloud Phoenix, God knows. Yeah. There's also um Death Miss Raptor, you know, a lot of times when people play Death Miss Raptor the first time, they play it flipped up. Mm. Um and Anger of the Gods solves that problem. Mm. We're seeing a lot of those mid range sort of um ramp or devotion based decks mm. that play four Elvish Mystic, three or four Sylvan Carry at it. And I will say Anger of the Gods can just derail that, uh, you know. But by the time especially on the draw, by the time you play Anger of the Gods, they've already ramped out Sea Dried on their third turn. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? Like there are plenty of times <coughs> where Anger of the Gods doesn't come into play and help. Yeah. So there, there are enough that's though. I'd say why I cut it back to two. It started off as three, I, especially in local metas. Mm. I say we're probably seeing a lot of you know mono red aggro and these budget builds. Bant heroic and anger of the gods is fantastic against those builds. I mean, I can't, I can't argue that yeah. at all. But you know, the reason that mine is sort of more tailored towards control mid -range and, and mid range, control right? I mean, is what, because that's the really high tier decks. Sort of, yeah. Uh, I, You'll still see it, F and M. There are plenty of players that yeah. still bring those out. Um, so yeah, and I've got more dig pieces. You know, I'm running a steam augury and an anticipate. Mm. Um, so I'm trying to you know sort of dig against other mid range and control decks where I can get to my counter spells and things yeah. like that. So uh, that is sort of the main difference between these two decks. Is yours mm. is I want to beat aggro, no mm. questions asked. And mine is I want to compete against control mm. decks, no yeah. questions asked. If we're going to debate on something, this has been a not really a debate. It's just been like, yes, that is correct, and yes, <laughs> that is correct too. And it, you know, uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Which, um... There's really nothing that we're at each other's throats about because we're dealing with different deck types. Yeah. You know what I mean? We we are tuned to different deck types. So there's nothing he could be like, what an idiot! You're not blah blah. You know, it's, uh, <laughs> we're doing different the, things. The only thing I have to call this man an idiot for is that one copy of Anticipate. I don't know. I, uh, which mm. is gonna sound kind of biased and weird because I am a huge fan of Anticipate. He loves Anticipate. I love Anticipate yeah. more than anyone out there. I will almost guarantee it. Um, but in control... People, people love Anticipate. Yeah, yeah people love Anticipate. <laughs> uh, in control decks, Anticipate is bad. And this is coming from pro-level Esper players. Anticipate <laughs> is just not a card you want. Mm. So... That's hard to agree with. I, I, I know, so hard to agree with. Uh, I've been reading up a bunch of articles while making this deck list, um, and yeah, anticipate. It, as far as the pros are concerned, it's just not good enough in the Esper control builds. Yeah, for like Esper control. Yeah, I don't so, know about blue black. I think like straight up blue black control maybe anticipates worth it. My my argument with anticipate is, and it's it's along the same lines as we've been, you know, with this deck, sort of our, our disagreement is that he's tuned for aggro, I'm tuned for control. I think that the meta is, and again, I don't know your local meta, but the meta, sort of, for this standard environment, is shifting more towards control. Mm. Um, and Anticipate helps you dig for removal and counter spells against other control decks, and then still cast the spell that you anticipate for. Same token. I can't completely disagree with Tony because, as you can tell, I'm only playing the one Anticipate. Mm -hmm. It's not like I'm playing a 3, 4, or anything like that. So I do think that it's it's not entirely folly to play Anticipate, but you, you, can't, you can definitely play too many copies mm -hmm. of Anticipate. But my main point here is I think the, the format is shifting enough towards control 
to anticipate is more viable than it was. Mm. I'm running a full full four of dissolve. He's running two dissolve. Mm. Um, what's up with that? Uh, honestly, I would love to run four dissolve, but I was having a hard time finding the place for it. Yeah. I value Salungar Scorn so much that I really like it. <laughs> since I've gotten used to being able to pay two for a counterspell. Counterspell, yeah, now it's all looks like crap. <laughs> yeah, it just, I hate having to pay three for a counterspell now. That's, so. uh, that's probably fair. I mean, uh, I, I still think Dissolve is if, second best counterspell in the format, you know? It's, if I was going to make any actual changes to the list right now, it would probably be to cut back on one roast and add that third copy of Dissolve. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds because fair. I I don't know about two main deck roasts is my thing, you know. That which is my way yeah. of agreeing with you. <laughs> Boom. We can probably though oh, oh there there is one there is one thing. <laughs> We're gonna talk about Kolagon's command, I think. And Silumgar's command. And Silumgar's command. You to yeah. Get me on. Well, you know, I just Kolagon's command if I'm not going to call Tony an idiot. <laughs> I'm not gonna, if there was one thing I had to call Tony an idiot, I'm not uh, going to call him uh, an idiot. No, I wouldn't. But I, I, I wouldn't would, object to that on this one. <laughs> I don't. I I just don't think Kuligan's command is powerful enough in comparison to the other cards we have access to. Fair enough. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, um, I can obviously see its flexibility. Yeah. My argument for Kuligan's command is that uh, I've been able to bust up one of their guys, get back a Dragon Lord, be able to Scorn or Falltone for that matter. And get the added bonus of either the you hard the dragon counter. in your hand, yeah. Yeah, so hard counter, so I've got my dragon. Yeah. Plus, I have my dragon back, so I can cast it. Cast again. the dragon, yeah. Yeah, which is so nice. Um, I think it's in a format, we just talked about this, it's a format full of removal. And, you know, they're, they're, I mean, honestly, any creature you play that doesn't have X proof, yeah. even, even ones that do, because we have Perilous Vault and Crux of Fate and Hostilities, even the creatures that do have X proof, when you play them, you're like, you can more or less count on they're going to at least attempt to remove this creature at some point during yeah. the game. So, I mean, we talked about this before the video a little bit. That, like, raise dead option on Kolagon's command is, is underappreciated. Very underappreciated. Yeah. Okay, so we talked about one command. Let's talk about the other command. So, with, <laughs> Go uh, ahead. With Solengar's command, um, we said this in uh, spoiler season and whatnot. It's a great card, or at least it seems to be. Yeah, well, I gave I gave it an eight in okay. spoiler season. I thought it was a built-in two for one and all mm -hmm. that. I just feel like it might be a mana too much in this format, you know. Uh, in playtesting in this deck, it kind of is a mana too much. There are so many times when I wish I would could cast it for four and have two mana up instead of five. And having one mana up when I can't actually do anything with that one. Granted, it is still like end of turn or during combat. So, I mean, instant speed is good. Yeah. You know, I, you know, I imagine that it's the kind of card like when it works, it's blowout. Oh god, you know? when it works, it is always great. It's either uh, blow up a guy and counter a spell like their big burn spell to kill you, yeah. or a planeswalker. The main difference between our lands, if you're going to take anything away from there, there's actually two huge differences. One is that he plays 26, I play 27. Um, the other is that he wants to scry, which I agree with him, and I want to gain a little bit of life here and there. So here, I'm going to go ahead and post our lands. You can see them right here. Um, here are our lands. You can tell he's running more temples, I'm running some game lands. Mm -hmm. Uh, the main difference is that I'm on 27, he's at 26. Yeah. The only reason I played 27 is I feel like 27 is sort of the standard for control decks in this meta right now. Honestly, after testing and after our discussions before shooting, um, 27 lands is probably the way to go. You just gotta get them. Yeah. You gotta get them. It's better... I haven't had too many problems getting my drops to 26, but yeah. I'm so hungry that 27 might make me consistently get them to where yeah. I never worry it's, about especially it. Especially in this, man, like, the control decks of today that play high mana dragons and stuff, like, you got to have your drops. You've absolutely got to have them, because not only do you have to play the dragons, you have to protect the dragons. So all of them cost seven or eight mana. You know, you've got to uh, have your drops. Our boards, I think, are probably extraordinarily different. Oh, all well day. <laughs> so let's go ahead and post our two boards right here. Obviously, this there's a lot of removal in my board. Mm -hmm. So all the work you're doing against aggro in your main, I've got here in my board. Exactly. And you can tell that your board is tuned more towards sort of mid-range decks. Mm -hmm. And even other control decks. 
Yeah. So, again, the major difference in our decks is exactly that. Yeah. You know, we don't necessarily disagree with one another's boards. Mm -hmm. We just know that our boards, like, I know his board has to be the way it is, and he knows the same thing about my board, because we're doing different things in the main. Exactly. You know? Not a very argumentative debate, but here's my actual argument time. Here we go. Uh, when you board to that third thought seize, that seems like you're trying to uh, get out to more of a uh, turn one thought seize there. Uh, usually, first couple of turns. Yeah. yeah. Uh, does your land base really support that? We've got something like 11 black sources, mm -hmm. which means that one out of, a little better than one out of six cards, theoretically, should oh. be black sources. Oh, um, well, uh, so yeah, I feel like, I feel like we, we can support that. We can support that, a third thought seize. Plus, not only am I trying to, not only am I trying to get it early game more often, but mm -hmm. thought seize, especially against other control decks, is always a fantastic top deck. Oh, yeah. So I'm, I'm fine with top decking it late game. You know, mm. that, that's okay with me. Anyway, um, <laughs> we could probably hit him with the outro because we just talked a bunch of junk that had nothing to do with this video. Oh, that's all right. We got bloopers coming for y'all. Hey. Yeah, exactly. There will be a blooper reel for this video, <laughs> guaranteed. Um, but yeah, <laughs> as usual, if you enjoyed this content, like, share, comment, subscribe. It does us so much good. And we've gotten a lot of subscribers here lately. We really appreciate that, man. Thanks. Welcome to SBMTG. We're going to keep doing stuff like oh, this. Yeah. <laughs> so hope you enjoy it. Uh, Magic Origin spoilers coming soon. Oh, like God. The next like two weeks, you got to get ready to never sleep. Oh. Um, but yeah, I'm Devin. He's I'm Tony. Tony. As has been stated by us. And, uh, yeah, we're Strictly Better MTG, SBMTG. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe, and we will see you fellows next time. Thanks for watching, Wizards. I just pictured a guy riding an Ojutai in the battle. So awesome. So awesome. Uh, I'll tell you about that later. Um, riding Ojutai? Uh, no, there's a... It's a crappy... Reference oh, to something. <laughs> I was hoping that you actually were like, <laughs> People start playing Yu-Gi-Oh! They're like nine. Yeah. And then they go to the card shop to play Yu-Gi-Oh! And there's a bunch of older guys that are like, Will you play that stupid game? So they start playing Magic. <laughs> card games so, are good. Yeah, period. card games are good. Don't think you Never know. look down on a card game. Seriously, I, uh, to this day, I haven't played it in years. Actually, that's not true because I played it on um, Game Boy Advance still sometimes. <laughs> But the Pokemon card game is really good. There's, I love that game. Hey, Apollo! <laughs> it's Apollo Puppy! Don't hate other card games because you play Magic. That's uh, stupid. To show that I'm an old man, I played the Digimon card game. <clears throat> there was... There was a... Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> knew there were a bunch of like video games inside. There's a Digimon card game out there somewhere. Uh, it's old. They don't. They don't make that anymore. I, mean, I can't. I played the now. WWE oh, card ago. game. I can't. I played the oh, WWE man. card game. You I played, played the a wrestling card game. It was awesome. <laughs> it was so good. Like you play small moves to build up your stamina. When you build up your stamina. You play finisher. It's really, it was a good game. It was a fine game, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I played, I played the Dragon Ball Z game, and that was like the most complicated. Oh God. Junk ever. Oh God. <laughs> Never ever sleep I again. I have so much to do though. I know, what he's else? he's got a life and stuff. I mean, I technically do. I've got like a wife and a job. But I still, I, I mean. Don't, I don't have a life. I'm in the house. But that's. <laughs> in case you didn't know, to do a five minute spoiler video is like five hours of work. <laughs> Just about. <laughs> so. We usually have like four or five takes to try and get everything right, um, streamline the process. Editing yeah. is a. There's all the editing. I've gotten to where I enjoy editing. I, I, like, I enjoy the process, but I hate the time investment. I know when I sit down to edit a video at 10 o'clock at night, it's going to get uploaded at 5 o'clock in the morning. Like, it takes that long, and you know? It's... Anyway. <laughs> Speaking of editing, this will get it edited out. <laughs> so, blooper reel. <laughs> Look for the blooper reel video. Um, of course, me saying that will probably be in the blooper reel video. <laughs> Y'all have a good night.